Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyami, Gitin Daf Pei. We are holding at the beginning of the um, uh, Gemara, meaning right after the Mishnah ends, and the Gemara begins, which is 19 lines from the top, that's where we're holding. Now the Mishnah mentioned a case where a person wrote a get, but he, he made a mistake. You see, there was a, a din that you have to date the, uh, the document by relating to the current king currently in office. So it's, you know, year such and such to King XYZ. But he didn't, he didn't do so. He related to a different Malchus. He's living in, you know, in Bavel. And he writes something about uh, the Roman Empire. Right? So it doesn't work. So the Mishnah starts with a case where he wrote the, the, uh, the date based on a Malchus She'eno Higemes, an improper Malchus, an incomplete Malchus. What is that? My Malchus She'eno Higemes. Malchus Haramim, the Roman Empire. Vamai Kar La Malchus She'eno Higemes. Why do we call her as such? It's internally deficient. Unlike your typical government and country that have their own language and alphabet, Rome does not have that. It was cursed. It was a the Einish from Hashem, as the Gemara and Megillah, the Umid Beis tells us, they don't have their own independent alphabet or language. It's all a conglomerate of other civilizations, uh, you know, way of speaking and writing, and therefore we call it a Malchus Ein Haigemis. Now, let's go back a second. Why at all do we have to relate to the Goyesha king? Amar Ula Mipnei Ma. Why is it so? That the Kinu Malchus begitten that we have Malchus inserted into our religious documents into our Gitten. The answer is Mishum Sholei Malchus to maintain the peace between ourselves and our host countries. As Rashi explains around 10 12 lines from the bottom, Mishum Sholei Malchus Shihei Lonu Sholei to engender peace between ourselves and our countries. You know, they know the Yidna special and they are greatly honored when we recognize them, we relate to them. Look, the Yidna writing their important religious marriage documents with us in mind. So, it's good for us to do that. Asks the Gemara, okay, do it, but if you don't, why would it invalidate the get, you know, to that extent? If that's the underlying reason, why is it critical? If she uses an improperly dated get, you say, well, she has to leave a new husband and it's a mamzer. Incorrect. Romeo was the author of the Mishnah, follows his sheet elsewhere. Either you follow or you're out. Whoever deviates from the matbeya coin, meaning it's like a package. Chacham instituted a certain system. We don't conform. What's the halacha? The get is puzzle, Havlad mamzer, and the child is mamzer. So in the first example, he related to uh, to Rome when he was living in Babel. No good. The Shomachos Yavan, he related to the Greek government, the Greek uh, king. He's not living in Greece. So it doesn't work. Utsricha, now, why did the Mishnah have to bring so many examples of an improperly dated get. Each one carries an element of chidush. If we only discussed Rome, because he's living in Babel, right? And by, by citing Rome, he's sort of pledging allegiance to Rome, which is an affront to the local uh, king, to the local government. They perceive it as a threat. So perhaps that's a problem. Avel, Malchus, Madai, Malchus, Yavan. But if he discusses uh, Madai and Yavan, why the Ava, Ava, they're long gone. Who cares? Nobody feels threatened by them. They're just a blimp in history. So perhaps that's not so uh, damaging. No, it is. It is. Vyashmin, Malchus, Madai, Malchus, Yavan. Now, if we discussed only that case, Mishun, the Malchus, so Habu. Because after all, at a certain point in time, they did rule. So the current government perceives it as a you know matter of conflict you're giving them the honor not us I have a opinion of bias but discussing you know personally you know uh, 
important events, Jewish events, of Albinin Habayis. It's such and such year to the building of the Beis Hamikdash. My Dava Hava, that's a bygone. It's not a a Malchus, right? We no longer have that uh, title. We don't have Malchus Yisrael. We're in Gullus. So perhaps that's not so damaging. We are Shmina Bin Abayis now. If we only discuss Bin Abayis being a problem, the Amri, because the Goyim, again, might feel threatened. They'll say, look, Kamat Kurish Vachayu, they're relating back to their uh, praise, their um, uh, priding themselves with the Binyan Beis Amigdash, and they'll be Makbir on that. Aval Chubin Abayis, but relating to the destruction of Abayis Amigdash. It's Aru, it's something distressing. Hey, Malay, perhaps that doesn't concern the local Goyim. They won't feel threatened. Perhaps we can do that without risk. Tzricha says the Mishnah, no. Whatever you write, unless it actually relates to the current king and the current Malchus, it does not qualify. Hayyub Mizrach, because of Bemar. Mishnah continues. So he's in Mizrach and he writes, as per the location, he writes Marav. Or the other way around, it doesn't work. Now, whose location? Man, Ilim Abal, the husband's place of residence, was misstated in the get. That's been discussed earlier in the Mishnah. He committed a mistake in terms of his name or her name, his place of residence and hers. So, why the repetition in the Mishnah? El Laf Seifer was speaking about where the Seifer is writing the get. A totally different aspect of location. One is husband and wife's city of origin. That's number one. Number two, you also have to write, you have to record the mocking where the get is being written now. And if it's inaccurate, that's a problem. How do we know that, in fact, the cipher will record his current location? Could the Amrlu Rav, Rav Lasafir, Rav told his cipher, Rechein Amrlu Rav Huna Lasafir, So Rav would tell his seifrim, and likewise Rav Huna would tell his scribes, Ki asvisu b'shili. So you decide to sit down and write the, the get in this place called Shili. Ksoivu b'shili, you should actually record that you write again in Shili. Vafagav de mimsiron l'chumili, even though the instructions from the husband came about in a different location, Bihini. It's irrelevant. Current location. Ki asvisu b'hini, likewise if you're sitting in Hini to write the get, Ksivu hinu. You should write. You should record that location. I'm writing it in Hini. Even though the husband gave you his instructions, his verbal instructions in Shili. So there are two separate points here in terms of location. Husband is Ruvain from New York. That's first of all. And if you're writing it in Toronto, you have to write, okay, I'm sitting here in Toronto writing the get. And if any of that is inaccurate, then that's a reason for Pso. Amar Vidam Shmuel. This whole, you know, Mishnah that uh, tells us a chiddush that if you wrote, uh, you know, the wrong king and all that, the get is totally puzzled with all its consequences. Zudib Rav Meir, Rav Meir Shita, Ava Chacham Oimrim, Chacham say it's not so critical. Afilu Loi Kasav, Ella L'Shem Santer, Santer is a fellow who is uh, in charge of. Uh, you know, the um, land demarcations in town. You know, he's a bucky and, you know, and lots and plots throughout the city. So he knows exactly, uh, you know, what belongs to whom. So that's his uh, job. I feel like of El Lashem Santa should be here, Harizim Even if you decide to give him the honor, it's uh, five years. Um, and to uh, Joe, the uh, land allocator's, uh, you know, uh, job. That works. It's close enough. Even though it's not the actual Malchus, the king sitting in the, uh, you know, on his throne. How who Gita, there was a certain Gita, because of Baal Hashem is Tandra, the Bishkar. So, instead of relating to the king and the, you know, the amount of years that he's been uh, in office, they put down a number based on the Istandra, that was uh, sort of a local mayor of the town Bishkar. Okay, it's 10 years into 
uh, is Tandra's, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, I don't know his name, but whatever his name is, rule. Does that work? Shalcha. Rav Nachum, Rav Chizda. So he sent a question to Kamei de Rabba. Kei Gavnamai, what would you say uh, about such a, a get? So it's not sort of a, you know, a lowly position. It's not just like a, you know, a civil servant, a land allocator. No, it's not the actual king in the, in the palace. It's somewhere in between. It's sort of a, a mayor who's representing the king. So what would you say in this case? Kei Gavnamai, Shalach Lai, responded, perfect. Baha, I feel mayor might be. In this case, even a mayor would agree it's okay. It's close enough to the actual king. My time and why? Ma'isamachosu because he represents this king. What's the difference between this case and the previous case? A big difference. Hasam zilalu milsa. There, it's embarrassing that you're um, you're, you're giving cover to the local, you know, um, you know, land uh, distributor. That's not cover to the king uh, out in the back in the palace. Hacha shvichalu milsa, but. Uh, uh, you know, the mayor or the governor appointed by the king, that's, uh, that's, that's enough of an honor because he represents the king and he's like sort of the king's ambassador in town. So it's close enough to the king and it qualifies for Shalom Malchus. It's even Ramey would agree. Amrav Abba Amar Huna Marav. Zu Divira Meir. So when the Mishnah says that. Uh, the, you left out the malchus, or you wrote the wrong malchus. The get is totally bottled. That's your mayor shita. But once again, chachamim disagree. Chacham oimrim havlad kasher. They hold that uh, writing the the malchus is not so critical. And according to this uh, shita now, chacham would say it's totally kasher, even with, if you omitted any reference to the malchus. But that's only when it comes to writing the malchus. Umoidim chacham ramir chacham agree with the other things. Shem shina shma yu shma shem ira v'shem ira ira. He left out the other personal details, names, and locations. In that case, all agree. It's, it's not a get. A get has to uh, very clearly identify the parties involved. In this case, we, we say the get is possible. And she remarries. Shavlad mams, and Vlad is a mams. Omar of Ash, y'all prove this point. That there's a distinction within the Mishnah. Some things are less critical than others. Af tanina. Take a close look at the Mishnah. So first the Mishnah spoke about you know, skipping the malchus. That's a problem. And then the Mishnah went on to a new description of errors. Other examples. Shina, Shema, Yushma, right? Shem Ido, Shem the names, locations. Te'itzi, Mizeh, Mizeh, Chal, Drachem, Eilubba, right? All those consequences apply. Now, Ha, Man, Ketan, Who is the author of this um, section of the Mishnah? Ilim, Rav Meir. Is it the same Rav Meir as the beginning of the Mishnah? Then why separate intersections? Lir, Vinhu, Vilis, Why don't we just Put all the examples together. All different deviations and mess-ups and mistakes all have the same grave results. The fact that the Mishnah separated them. First we discussed missing the Malchus. No good. Then we discussed um, you know, misrepresenting the, the personal details of the parties involved. Because although the Chachamim disagree with the first case, but they totally agree that Messing up the names invalidates the get. Eloshma, you know, Rabbonoshma, you know, the Raya, the Rabbonon agree. In this case, that uh, the the get is totally possible and the Vlad is a mom's. Okay, then we proceeded to the next part of the Mishnah, which was more Yibum related. So let's just do a quick uh, refresher. We have a couple of brothers, Ruben and Shimon, right? Reuben had been married uh, to, let's say, let's say, Rachel and Leah. Okay? Now, when he um, passed away without any kids, so his brother Shimon is meant to do the Yibam. Um, And one of the uh, wives say uh, Rachel is incapable of doing Yibam with Shimon because she's his relative. She's a daughter, she's a sister, an erva. Okay? So the Achel is that she's part of from Yibam. And not only is she exempt, but her co-wife, the, the Leah, the other wife, is also exempt. She's called Saras Erva because she was accompanying Rachel in that marriage. 
Now, upon Reuben's death, Leah figured, okay, I'm free to go marry somebody else because I'm Potter from Yuban because of Rachel. Turns out, she married somebody else, and we discovered Rachel was never really married to Reuben. It was something inherently deficient in that relationship. She was a mekachtos, she was an islandess, unfit to bear children, and the whole marriage is gone. Mekachtos, mistaken transaction. So she was never really part of the equation, in which case, Leah was really meant for Yibam, because she never had a co-wife called Rachel. But unbeknown to her, she went and married out, without having first examined and checked Rachel's condition. Mishnah says, we apply all those consequences, all those penalties, etc. That was one case. It's just important to go through all the cases because tomorrow we'll discuss them one by one. So that was one case. Then we had another Yibam case where Reuben had been married to Rachel and Leah. Now, rather than being than Rachel having been a relative of Shimon, she was not a relative, a total stranger. So Rachel and Leah, unrelated to Shimon, and perfectly roy for Yibam. They're perfect candidates for Yibam to Shimon. Shimon married one of them. He married Rachel. Halacha is, you only do Yibam to one of the two wives. So now Leah is free to go, and she goes and marries out. Turns out that, once again, Rachel was discovered to be an illness. In which case, she was never really part of the equation. She wasn't married to Reuben to begin with. She wasn't a potential Yibama. And Leah really needed the even personally, and she didn't have it. Once again, we say, we penalize, we apply all those consequences. Now, the Mishnah does mention that Leah married out. Nisu'in. We only say this because she married somebody else. But Zinu, let's say she was improperly involved with somebody else as married, but not really married. She committed Znus. It would appear from the Mishnah that we don't apply the same rules. We don't penalize her. She can actually go now and she wants to do Yibam with uh, Shimon. No problem. And the reason is, Rashi explains this, the reason is because there's a big difference. When she married out, people think, you know, that apparently she was... Uh, you know, she had Chalita done to her and, you know, she was done with the Shimon. Now she married a stranger. She married Levi, a different person. And now if it was discovered that really she needs to have Yibum and she goes back and marries Shimon, people think, one second, Shimon already exempted her. She did, he did Chalita. She's off. And now she comes back to him, which is not allowed. Now they're marrying Isha that he did Chalita to. So if she marries out, it appears that she had addressed, you know, Shimon, Shimon had accommodated her, done Chalitza. Now, if she goes back to Shimon, that's a problem. But if she committed Znus, nobody will think, you know, that it doesn't, you know, present the same way. Okay, she uh, spent some time with somebody. It doesn't mean that, you know, Shimon already did Chalitza, so people won't think along those lines. And therefore, we let her go back and marry Shimon if it turns out that she needs to do even because Rachel wasn't really part of the equation. Leimotah, have it yuftad Rav Hamnuna, that's uh, straight out refutation of a Ramnuna who tells us that doesn't matter. Any sort of interaction with another man results in the same consequence. Dama Ramnuna, Shemer Siyavam, and Isha who is awaiting Yibam, Shazin, so even if she goes and hangs out as married with somebody else, Asura Liyavama, she can't go back to the Yavam. And our mission seems otherwise. Says the Gemara, no, Loi, instead of learning the mission that way, Let's say it this way. The Mishnah mentions Nisu, that she went and married somebody else. But what did Lizinu? The same thing would apply with Znus. Vadik Tani Nisu. And the reason why the Mishnah did mention the word Nisu, Lishna Mal Yanaka, it's just a more of a dignified expression. But of course, the same concept would apply with Znus. Vikad Amri, there's another way to approach this uh, whole discussion. So, version 2 goes like this. When the Mishnah speaks about the fact that she married out, Nisu, Vuadin Lazinu, the same thing applies if they go and do Znus. The same exact result, the same exact consequence. Leima Masayeli Rav Amnuna. Perhaps this will be a supporter of Amnuna. Instead of a Kasha, it's going to be a Raya. Dom Rav Amnuna, 
Shemer is Yavam, who did Znus, she's in Sasur Livam, she can't go back to the Yavam. Is that so? Is that a right or a Nun Loy? Says the Gemara, Nisu Dafka. No. Let's focus on the word of the Mishnah. The Mishnah says Nisu. Specifically Nisu. There we say, you can't go back to the Yavam. You know why? Mishum. The Michlafa. Be'isha shaholach balo l'mdinas hayam. Because it's, it's very similar. Meaning it's based on the same reason as the uh, halacha, where we, where we have an Isha whose husband left town. Halach bala l'mdinasayam. And she got word of his passing, which was not true, but that's what she thought. And she remarried. And suddenly the husband shows up. So we learned back in Yvamis. She's in deep trouble. She can't even go back to the first husband. Why? Because people might think that, hey, one second, why did she marry that other person? Because the first person already divorced her. That's what they'll think. They won't realize the whole thing was just a mistake. And now that she goes back to the first person, they'll say, one second. He's retaking his divorcee after she had already, already married somebody else? That's, that's not allowed. So on account of that, we say, don't go back to Ruben. So, in similar vein, in similar fashion, in a case of a Yivam circumstance, such as our discussion, we have a similar concern. Right? She was supposed to be a Yivama to Shimon. She thought she was off the hook because of what, you know, the reason we explained. She thought that Rachel was the Yivama and she had a Yivam, so she went and married somebody else. And now, it turns out that Rachel was not really eligible, she was an islandess, and Leah has to come back and do, uh, you know, uh, address her Yivam uh, obligations with, with, with the brother, with Shimon. We don't allow it because if we would do so, people might think that one second, he already did his chalitza. Look, the fact that she married somebody else, there must have been a reason why she married out. She must have been uh, a chalitza already. And now he's going to retake her? Which is awesome. So based on that same idea, we say uh, she can't go back. To but that's only when she married somebody. So we see that, you know, she went on, she moved on in life and she married out. So we assume she had a chalitza done to her. But if she does, just commits znus, people won't, you know, take it too seriously. Okay, she did something, you know, it doesn't mean anything about her chalutza status, it doesn't mean that Shimon did chalitza, nobody will think twice, and therefore we allow it to go back to Shimon. Continues the Gemara. So the Mishnah had two examples of a, a, a Yivama erroneously marrying out. Why do we need both cases? Utsricha, both are needed. Had we only discussed the first case, which again involved an erva, and she thought she was a tsaras erva, and that's why she didn't do the yibam. Mishum de lo yikayim, it says even there perhaps we have good reason to penalize her because it turns out that there was no yibam done at all. The erva certainly didn't have yibam, and the tsaras erva also thought she was pot, and she went out and she married someone else. There was no mitzvah yibam, so perhaps there we have good reason to apply a knas. Why'd you do that? You should have investigated, you should have discovered that she was an islandess. Aval hacha di yikai mitzvah yibam, but in the second case, where Rocha and Leo both eligible for yibam, nobody was an erva, and Shimon actually proceeded to do yibam on Rachel. So we had kiyu mitzvah yibam, at least we thought so, before we discovered that she was an islandess and ineligible. Amalei, so perhaps in this case, the reason for Leah's marrying out was because in her eyes, in her mind, there was a fulfillment of Mitzvah Sibam to Rachel. Amalek, perhaps, we won't come down so hard on her and penalize her. That's why we have to mention this case as well. Vyashmin and Hachbi only discussed this case. I would say, oh, here there's good reason to penalize Mishum to Karami Kameh. Because, after all, Rachel and Leah both were really candidates for Yibam. She was sort of in the discussion. She was Chayv and Yibam. Right? But then, when she figured, okay, Rachel was the lucky one who had Yibam, I'm free to marry out, turns out it was a mistake. But since she was already Chayiv and Yibam, so perhaps there is a stronger basis for penalizing her. You should have really confirmed that you're exempt now from Yibam. Look, you're Chayiv and Yibam. Who says you're Potter? You have to really make sure you're Potter. So until you've fully addressed that and fully 
confirm that you're you're being looked at after that your chiyuv was looked after. You shouldn't have gone married out. So there's reason for penalization. Aval has somebody in the earlier case where there was an erva and she perceived herself as a tzarist erva. Rami kamei, she was never slated for the yavam. Rami kamei means she's like slated for him. She was never slated for him. In her mind, she was totally exempt. She was a tzarist erva. Never really entered the realm of yibum. So in that case, perhaps she's not thinking yibum uh, thoughts. She's not on that track at all. Amalei, so perhaps in that case, even though she didn't do proper due diligence and investigation, perhaps we won't come down hard on her because it wasn't really on her program. Tricha, no, says the mission in both cases, we have the same results and same severe consequences. You should do your homework before you draw conclusions. In the last case, we have mixed up documents. Kosov Asefer Vatov and Osin Get Leisha, right? Meshav Leish. So he wrote a get for the. Man to give the woman and a shaver of a receipt for the ksuba payment, give it, he's going to give it to the woman who's going to eventually give it to the man, and he mixed things up. And a while later, the man discovers he's holding a you know, it was a rolled up document, so you know, he didn't know. Now he discovers that it's it's the get, he never gave it to her, she gave it to him instead of him giving it to her. So we say, Look, you know, it's terrible. And her blessing says, One second, Imla Alter Yatsef was discovered right away. Okay, we believe it, but if it's a while later, you know, maybe they're just uh, scheming against new husband, trying to make him trouble. Now, we have to define what is called la'alter, what's called immediately. Hey, chedam la'alter. Hey, chedam la'acharzman. What's called right away, what's called later? Amr bidam rashmol, kolzman sheyashvin ba'asukun ba'isa inyan. It's very short proximity. While they're, st- they're still sitting and involving themselves with this divorce. Zeu la'alter, that's called la'alter. And if it's discovered right away, we believe that's what happened. We have to redo it. Um, the, once they get up and they come back, oh, fishy. That's too late. Um, we don't reckon with that. And we just let her, you know, move on. Ravada Barava Omar, he goes a bit more. Loinisis, as long as she's not yet remarried, that's close enough. Because you're not disenfranchising the new husband by claiming that there was a, an erroneous divorce. She's not married yet. So you have a right to claim as such. But once she's married, you're encroaching on the other person's territory. And this is once she remarried, it's too late for you to come and claim. Zeul Achazman. Okay, so we have two um, opinions in terms of what is considered La Alta. How close to the actual event? Right away or as long as she's not yet married? Tanan, what does the Mishnah say? Look, like Kalheimenu, why don't we trust this first husband? His former husband, who claims that this whole thing was just, you know, mixed up and messed up, because it's not within his ability, he has no right to go mess up the second person's marriage. And the first fellow has no right to disenfranchise the new husband by claiming that this whole get never happened. So now, it's pretty clear there's a new husband on the scene. So Bishlam Lervadabar Ava, according to the second approach, that it's all about is she remarried or not? That explains why the Mishnah relates to a new husband. That's the whole point. El Shmuel, my Shani, but according to Shmuel, it's unrelated to a new husband. As long as they get up, they walk away from this meeting, from this get meeting. That's it. We close the case. So why does the Mishnah relate to a new husband? It's just a way of expression, what the Mishnah means to say. As soon as you she gets up. She's a becheskas mugureshes. She's presumed to be divorced. And it means that anybody can marry. There's a schus haru'il l'sheni. So anybody can go and marry her now. You have no right to revoke that schus. You can't come and tell us stories about mixed up kitten. It's too late. You want to verify? You want to claim? Do it as it's happening. Once it's over, it's over. Okay, let's bl- briefly recap the, the Gemara. There are many elements within a, a get, many of which are critical and, according to a mayor, can really invalidate the get and bring about grave consequences if she goes and remarries. One of those things is the malchus. You have to properly date the ashtar, otherwise it's puzzled. Chachamim take a more lenient approach. Uh, you could even uh, relate to the local uh, land allocator. And according to the uh, other amayra, even if you actually leave it out entirely, um, 
you'd be a, a kasher. But when it comes to the other uh, you know, details, personals, names, and locations, those are critical according to all shittas. We discussed uh, an isha who uh, was a yevama and thinking she was off the hook when remarried. We have several cases of such. And finally, the case where the, uh, they claim, the husband claims that he's discovered the, uh, the get in his possession, apparently never given to the isha. Is he trusted? Is he not? Well, if it's right away, okay. Otherwise, not. We have two definitions in terms of the word la'alter. Hatlacha rabatu and much basura is